everybody, it's Sam at Mix Up Crown. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I have got the 8x8 storage to show you how to make today. So I've already done the 6x6, which I've done some time ago, which you've loved. So many of you have shared your versions, and um, I now needed an 8x8. So I don't tend to have a lot of 8x8 packs, but since joining the Trim Craft Design team, I have received them. And also for a few commissions that I've done, I've received some 8x8s as well. So. I thought I would do the double one so that I've got room to obviously add more as and when I get them. It's really, really easy to make. I will pop a little link up here for the 6x6 as well, because if you're new to my channel, then you can make the 6x6 and the 8x8 together and have a nice little set. I've used the gorgeous Chasing Rainbows paper pack, which I'll share with you in a moment, and I've also done a lovely little decoration there on the front. The base is all reinforced with another thick piece of... Um, chipboard and I've done the corners there with my metal protectors which I'll show you how to do. Um, lots of hints and tips along the way and yeah I hope you enjoy it so let's get into the tutorial. Okay so I'm using the Chasing Rainbows 12 by 12 paper pack. Um, if you saw me when I done the unboxing video I was rather excited with this one. It's just so bright and happy and reminds me of my childhood so I'm super excited to use this one and that's why I wanted to use this paper on this storage piece because it's something I'm going to look at every day. Also in here you get a sheet, you get three sheets with all these lovely cut out pieces and the good thing with these circle ones is they will, if you've got a two inch punch you can just cut them out perfectly. If I just show you the full sheet, this one here so all of these will cut perfectly with a two inch circle punch. So again, you just get a really perfect, you know, cut image. You don't have to worry about fussy cutting it. And all of these I just cut on my trimmer, just using this, you know, because they're all straight lines. So it's really nice to, to cut out and they make perfect little, you know, embellishments for your, whether you're scrapbooking or card making or making something like this. So I'm going to use a couple of these to decorate the very front. So they're all ready. I've already chosen my papers. I'm going to be using the, this is the yellow I'm going to use for the base. Then I've got this star print for the back. And then I've already done this one. So this one is ready to go. I'm going to be making two of these, but obviously you may just want to do one, which on my six by six one that I done, which I will link up here, I show you how you can just keep it as one, or if you want to use two, you can, but I always like two. And I just think the two together just really kind of um, help strengthen the whole thing. So I've got this lovely, um, I said, this reminds me of Care Bears. I was a big fan of Care Bears as a child. So I've got the Care Bear one for the front. And then what I've done really thinking about it is this one here you're not going to see because this is going to be stuck against another one so what I've done on this second one if I show it is I've already done this one and I've put it just on white because that is going to stick to that so looking back now you want to try and make sure you've got a white piece for the inside um, section if you're doing two like me because you're not going to see them and it's a shame to waste that paper so that's my kind of lesson learned there I guess is just to yeah make sure you don't use you know your, your, your best papers but if you're making one then you do want to have it so I guess I could keep that as a single one but like I said I do want to double these up okay so you're going to need one piece of and this is going to be to cover your base if you're doing a double. If you're just doing a single, I'll put the measurements for the base in my blog. But this is a piece of 11 by 9, okay? So like I said, that's the 11 there. And then for my chipboard to go on the bottom, so this is going to wrap around that basically. This is a piece of, I think it's 4 mil. it's super strong. And it was actually on the back of my watercolour paper pack. This one here, which I picked up from the works and it was literally on the back obviously I've cut it down it's so strong you, you can't bend that at all it's solid so I thought that's going to work perfectly for the base but you can obviously buy your chipboard but um yeah one two three three mil sorry so yeah you want a, a two or three mil really for your base and this here is a piece that is seven and a half by nine and a half okay so that's for the base and then you're going to want two pieces of a nice pattern which are 10 by 8 and 3 quarters, and then two pieces that are white that are 10 and um, 10 by 8 and 3 quarters, because obviously you're not going to see them, the inside ones. But if you're just doing one box and you'll just need two that are patterned, 
your chipboard you need um, if you're doing four if you're doing two of them like me you'll need four pieces that are nine and a half by seven and one eighth if you're just making a single one then you'll just need two pieces of this size and then again for this so you're the chipboard you'll need four pieces because these are the sides if you're doing double obviously if you're just making one you just need two and the seven and one eighth by three and one eighth and again the lovely pattern paper to go on them you either need four or two depending on what you're making and these are four and five eighths by eight and five eighths okay again all of that will be linked in on my blog so I've already gone ahead and done one of my sides and I've finished this one obviously completely but what I'm going to show you first was do what was stick the side down you're going to need to do this either twice or four times depending on how big you're making it so this is just a really old piece of mirrored um, chipboard that I had so I'm just going to stick down this back piece here but all I'm doing is I've got my ultra tape here my strong one inch tape and just going to pop a few strips along this just to cover it and then I'm also going to pop some wet glue on the top take that off and then I'm just going to use some of this tacky glue it's just really kind of around the edges more than anything just to make sure you get a really nice seal like so and then make sure you've got your print that you want facing down and then this piece you're going to stick in the middle so you should have it's about three quarters yeah it's three quarters of an inch border around all four sides okay and I'm going to flip it over oh throw my bone folder and then just make sure all that glue and all the air bubbles are out like so then you just want to go around and kind of burnish I guess the, the kind of crease lines not even score lines you're just kind of framing that like so so they're all now kind of wanting to go in on themselves okay then we need to cut away so you want to cut as if you're making a mini album you don't want to cut right up to the corner see I'm about I don't know one eighth of an inch quarter of an inch from the actual chipboard corner there so just cut slightly above and that way you'll, you won't um, have any of the chipboard exposed when we go to fold it all together do that on all four sides okay so now you will have to do either two if you're making a single one or you'll need four of those if you're doing double but remember I've already done my other one keep them to one side you don't need to do any more with it for the moment then we've got the side big side panels I'm going to leave my base till the very end okay so you're just doing exactly the same thing so you'll have two or four of these they're the nine and a half by seven and one eighth chipboard I think this is two mil again it's just lying around and then your pattern paper so again with the pattern paper facing down if it's directional then you want to the longer side is the base of your storage box so you just need to make sure your prints facing up the right way on the the landscape um, orientation mine stars so it doesn't matter I've already gone and covered this one with double-sided tape and I've gone over it with my bone folder again just making sure that all those air bubbles are out and that will just give you a really nice seal when we stick it all down so I'm just going to take my backing off okay and then you just again want to stick this down and you should have three quarters of an inch border it might even be one inch on this one but you should try and get it as equal as possible but like I said if it's a little bit in my case, if it was a bit crooked, it doesn't matter because it's um, that star print, so it wouldn't matter. But I guess if you've got something that's got a clear image on it, you do want to keep it as straight as you can. Again, fold it over and just go over now, making sure all the air bubbles are out. These were so popular. Um, you guys loved them, and I saw so many versions of the 6x6, and people were asking for the 8x8. At the time, I didn't really have, I guess the need for it or a place for it so I didn't do one but now I'm getting sent a lot more 8x8 packs and decoupage packs as well so um, they're quite nice to keep out and at hand near my desk my 12x12 ones I kind of keep away but the 8x8 ones yeah it's nice to have them a bit more at hand so I have been asked to do 12x12 the problem with 12x12 is you have to have paper and cardstock that's bigger than 12x12 and I don't really have a lot of that. I don't work with a lot of A3. I don't have a need for A3. Plus, 
the weight of 12 by 12 paper packs is is a lot and if you've got maybe you know six of them stacked up it just wouldn't work it really wouldn't you're better off using just strong you know normal storage containers or shelves for those so I doubt I will ever do one unless something comes onto the market which is just brilliant to use to make that kind of thing but yeah I mean you can get chipboard obviously large sizes of it and you can cover it with you know decorative wallpapers or wrapping papers and stuff so there are ways to do it but in terms of it lasting and the strength I don't think it's going to end up working and yeah anyway that's my reason so you just saw what I did there exactly the same to what I done here and again you will need to have two of these or four one will be patterned one will be plain because obviously we're going to have if you're doing the double that's going to be exposed this side's going to be stuck against the other one otherwise you'll have two printed ones if you're doing a single one Hopefully you're all following me here. <laughs> with it in a landscape orientation, with your top one, so again, if you've got a printed paper now, make sure you've got the top one. We're gonna fold this right over and actually stick it down. So again, I'm just gonna pop some double-sided tape, okay? And then I like to just get my bone fold and kind of push it against the side there. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit of wet glue, not a lot and then stick that over and just make sure that's all stuck down with no air bubbles. Okay, like that. So now you should have a nice flush top and then you've got these pieces all over. And you wanna do that on both pieces or on all four pieces. Make sure it's the top one that you're folding down and it's in that landscape orientation. Okay, so I've also done the same on the sides and then with those little bits, you just want to kind of push the sides in so that you've concealed the corner of your chipboard. So you can see I've just kind of gotten like that on the sides. Again, with this one here, just kind of push it really into its place there. And then when we go to put all the rest together. Now also, um, you can decorate the inside. What I've done is I've just gone down I don't know about three quarters of the way because once the paper, pa the you know your paper pads are in there. Bring in this one for example. You won't see, you know, too far inside. So I didn't go all the way down. I didn't even do the base, but just I used just scraps really. I done the sides as far as I could. That one went all the way down, but this one not quite. But I'm not too worried about that because you don't see it. But right, so you should have two or four pieces like that and two or four pieces like this. Okay, you need a base piece that is going to be. The same width, so three and one eighth, and this is by eight and a half. Okay, so with your base, you're gonna add. I'm gonna use my. This one gets quite tacky and sticky, although good. I'm now gonna use my Aline's tacky glue. Run a generous amount along the bottom. You can put double-sided tape down as well as you want, as well if you want. But I'm just gonna do my glue. Get one of the sides and pop it in like so push it down onto the paper underneath and just make sure when you bring it up see when it's when it lies down it's got a gap that's okay when it comes up it should have a really nice when it's on a right angle it should be completely kind of flush like you can't see you don't want to see any of the pink in my case paper through it and i know there i've got a really nice join like so and then just spend some time really kind of it will move a little bit. I'm just going to keep pushing that back in there because I know the gap that I need. Just spread out any glue. And I can flip it over. Because all of this is going to be stuck then onto our base. So you won't see this. You don't need to cover it at all. You just want to make sure that's really nice and secure. Okay. Then I'm going to pop some glue on this one and do the same on the other end. So pop it on first and bring it up into that right angle position. Make sure you can't see any of the, the tape or the paper underneath and then drop it down and you should have about a one eighth of an inch. Well, it'll be whatever the, the mill is of your chipboard. So like I said, this is two mil, um, between two and three, but that looks about two and that's what that gap is. And when I bring it up, it completely disappears. Okay, again, flip it over. Okay, 
then make sure you've got your, your space free because now you need to add these sides on so exactly the same so along the longer bottom cover that in glue this is why it's good to not use a glue that dries tacky because if you get any of it kind of oozing out and you don't see it inside your paper pads could then potentially get stuck to it and then you end up ruining them so now with this piece I'm going to come and sit that over the top like so and bring that side up don't worry about all the extra card all this hanging over at the minute because you need all of that because that's how we're going to join it together to get that really cool kind of finish on the corners so again bring that down and then I can just spend some time you want to make sure you've got the same kind of gap here and here and then obviously on that side. So I'm going to do the same with this one now as well. Okay, just make sure, I'm just thinking on this one actually, you need to make sure that it's folded in already. So just make sure that these sides are folded in as they are now. Because when you bring it up, yeah, you don't want it to be hanging out. So now that one as well. So all of these, just make sure that they are folded in. So again with this one fold in those sides and then I can have my glue. Okay so I've just roughly brought up all my four sides and I can see that they all line up nicely and they're all the same height. So I'm going to continue to use my wet glue. What we're going to do now is we're going to stick these sides together. So you're going to put glue on this side and this side and then they're going to stick together like that and that's what will give us that really nice concealed corner looks really really good I like doing it this way and then we will run some glue on one of the sides and I'll talk you through deciding which side because it does make a difference and then we'll stick it completely flush like so okay so first of all I'm going to pop my glue again you want a glue that's not going to dry tacky because this you kind of want it to ooze out because then you know that you've got a really nice finish and it's all going to be stuck. So I'm going quite close to the edge there. All right, And you can use double sided tape again if you want, but I'm going to just use my glue. Bring it up and pinch it together between your finger and your thumb. And then kind of push it to one side, push it to the other. It doesn't really matter too much at this point. You just want to make sure that it's all sticking down. I'm going to pop it on its side, pop that one back there. I'm going to come in with my bone folder and just kind of lean down on one side there and just get right into the corner. And I want to make sure that those two pieces are so secure and stuck because they are what holds this all together. Again, this, drew, this glue dries completely clear and it doesn't stay sticky. Then I'm pulling it down in the other direction and again, keeping your angle perfect, you want a really nice right angle, like so. And I've got some glue that's come out there, I'm just going to take off any excess. But other than that, that will dry completely clear and you won't even know it. So there is one corner already done and it looks really, really good. Next, work along the same side. So I'm going to run glue along this piece here. For those of you that have done my 6x6 box, probably will know exactly what to do and you'll just follow the measurements I've given you because they are, they're really handy little storage things. And you don't have to put papers in them, you can put anything in this. So again, I'm bringing this one up. Okay, so if you stick these onto this one, so if I push them up like that, you will pull in the pink here and it will you won't be able to see it so much from the front. If I bring that up, it kind of disappears. If I then move them so they stick against this these pieces and bring them down, look, they stick out. But that's there's no it doesn't matter. It's up to you. You might prefer that. I am gonna keep mine stuck to the front, and that's how I done them on the other one, so I know that they're both gonna sit perfect together. But it is up to you. But if you're gonna do it, you need to make sure they're both the same. So these will both be on the front here, and these back pieces will both be stuck on this, or both pieces are stuck on these sides, and these two pieces will be stuck on the sides as well. 
okay so it does get a little bit fiddly when you get to the those ones so obviously the box is then all sealed but what I'm going to do is I'm going to just run glue on the actual front of the box itself do that on there as well and then I can just stick that down and already this glue is drying hard so it is going to really strengthen the corners there now once you've stuck these down and you do want to cover inside here you might be giving it as a gift or you just want to cover a little bit further down do it now because it will get a bit harder to do once we've stuck the other side down now if you've got any bits sticking out of the top just push them in with your bone folder I'm also going to be putting ribbon around the top which can kind of hide these little bits and also the pom-pom trim as I did in my 6x6 looks really good as well so yeah it's entirely up to you but you just need to kind of push it in with your bone folder there like so and you can see what a really nice strong box we're getting so now you want to do the same again so I'm going to add my glue onto these two and everything I'm doing here you will repeat for the second box if you're doing the two together. Now with this one I'm going to do both at the same time because obviously it's going to be closing as we do this so bring them both up making sure the papers are obviously all facing inwards. Just going to lightly hold them there for a minute so they can kind of tack into place and if you're slightly out by one you can just pull them up a little bit it will move so don't be afraid to manipulate it a little bit if you need to. Okay, and I'm going to pop it on its side. You won't be able to see now, but I'm just doing the same. I'm just spreading out all the glue on those panel, on those little tabs. Okay, and then you want to do the same again now. I'm going to run some glue. In fact, I'm going to bring in a different glue that's got a thinner nozzle so I can get it right in there. Okay, there we go. So now you should have just that one or two, and then obviously you would have plain on one of them as well, on both of them, sorry, because they're now going to stick together like so. You can see they line up perfectly. Obviously that one will like so once it's all stuck down. Try and hide that white like that. There we go. Okay, so you can see how it's all going to come together. So now we just need to prep our base so this is that yellow piece which I said was 11 by 9 and then my chipboard base is nine and a half by seven and a half and I'll put measurements for the base in my blog for the single one so I've already put the backing on this one And then you're going to do exactly the same thing and stick that over like so. Okay, and then go around and fold all the sides again. Okay, and again cut the corners just slightly away from the actual corner of the chipboard. And you're going to stick all of those sides over. So just like we did just the one top one this one you're going to do all of the sides so I'm just going to run tape around all of them again just putting a little bit of glue over all of these you may also want to decorate the very very bottom if you're get again giving it as a gift I'm not so I'm not going to bother so just do exactly the same, so fold each one over like so and then where you've got that edge again, that corner, just push that side in, always kind of help it up like so and then fold it over and that way you get a really nice side. So yeah, so that's what I mean, you might want to cut a piece of cardstock or nice paper or something now 
to go over that but that is all you're going to see I've got a little mark there I need to get my rubber on that I'll probably get covered up covered up actually then I am going to bring in my corners so I'm not too worried about how they end up looking because these are now going to go on all four because they just give it a really nice finish and they look really good and I've just got my little craft hammer and then pop that on the corner I'm just going to grab this rag flip it over and you can yeah you can kind of push them down first yourself just to get them in place which I'm going to do on all four and then I can just hammer it all at once so just kind of bend them over enough they're kind of roughly there now if you don't have a hammer you can use I used to use my gold scissors those ones there because they're really heavy lots of weight on them but now I've got this little craft hammer it does make it easier okay so just with my rag there excuse the banging okay and that's what you want so I'm just going to do that on the other three sides Okay, so that is now all ready and that is solid, really, really strong base. But yeah, if you want to decorate that piece as well, you might want to put who's made it. Now, these two are going to stick together. So we'll stick them together first and then they will sit perfectly. I've even taken into account the corner edges, but it's really easy to kind of line it all up so you've got this half an inch overhang I've just pushed that back but it is it's about there okay so I'm going to stick these together first of all and I'm going to just use my strong wet glue so you're just sticking the two white sides together so then I'm going to choose did I have a preference to the front or back this one down so now I'm going to line them up and sit them on top of each other like so and then just kind of put your hand in between like that and sit them down now I've just realized seeing it like this but you could have some nice little shelves you see there once I've stuck it a bit better because it's not but you could have little drawers as well so I've got no need for that because I've got all like plastic and metal things but yeah that looks cool too so yeah the only difference with mine now is I've got a white and a patterned whereas you will have two whites there so you just have a nice white kind of band through the middle which will look obviously I guess a bit more finished but I'm not too worried you can see there how nice it all kind of lies lines up with each other and then I'm gonna do the bottom so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to run double sided tape across this way just just a few strips just because then I feel like it's kind of keeping them together that way as well not that they are going to go anywhere now but it does just help take all the backing off and I'm going to cover it with the same glue Okay, and then carefully with your base, holding it in the middle like so. Kind of hover it over first, making sure I'm focusing on the front. So the side I'm always going to see, because if for some reason I'm slightly out somewhere else, I'm not too worried. But I can see that's all okay. So then I'm just going to push that down and grab a ruler. Just kind of keep that all in place. And just go in there and really... I had lots of pressure to make sure that is stuck down. Now, if you're using a PVA glue, I wouldn't really recommend it because there's lots of water in that. But if you do use one, then I would suggest that you put 
something really heavy in here. Obviously fill it with the paper packs if necessary, but if you maybe don't have that many yet and you just want to keep this as something else, just put something really, really heavy in there just to stop it warping because the last thing you want is your base to warp. Um, it just It's not going to look very nice, but I'm just going to flip it over. But I'm pretty happy with that. You can see now I've got this really lovely piece of storage which is so strong I mean it's it is literally solid okay um right let me just show you I'm going to pop these in I've got some here but you can imagine now that's going to be my front so I've got all them there I'll put some papers in there off camera find some scraps but you can see how nice that is going to look I bring it to the side like so to decorate what you can do is I have got this really nice ribbon which I've had lying around for ages along with this really nice bow. Now I don't know if I'm going to use that bow or not. But how cute is that looking? Now I've got all these kind of decorative bits here. I don't want to put too much on, but I thought like make dreams happen, maybe have like that down there. Um, or we've got it there. I could have that hanging down. That would look quite nice because it's the same as the rainbows there. So I may well pop that on a bit of string. Or would it just kind of nestle? No, I'm going to play around with that. You'll see it in the photos anyway, but I just wanted to show you how you can kind of you know, incorporate them into your projects. That's another one there. It's a nice big tag that's the same. I might stamp something on that. But like I said, you'll see that all in the photos. But that is it. So let me grab so the paper packs. I've got more to fill the whole thing up, the two of them. And there you have it. They look so much better than how I had them kind of stored before. And it's just really pretty. And it's a nice way to appreciate the papers that you have because I know not everybody likes even to cut them up. But if you make something like this, then you get to kind of see them all. So yeah, there you have it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the 8x8 version and now if you've never made them before and you're new to the channel you can have a 6x6 and an 8x8 matching side by side that would look really nice and um, you never know I might do a 4x4 as well but there you have it thanks for watching hit the like button and subscribe so you get to see more and I'll be back soon bye